Tucked away in the mountains of Colorado is one of America's most unusual construction projects. This here is the Gross Reservoir, which has been supplying the city of Denver with much of its water for more than half a century. But not enough water, with more demand on the system than ever before and natural disasters becoming increasingly likely, this man-made lake now needs to be a lot bigger. It's reasonable to assume a reservoir can only be as big as the dam that created it, which is why teams here are having to pull off a rare and difficult task first. They're expanding the dam itself by building a new one on top of it. Well, this is really the first time that a gravity dam is being transformed into an arch dam, and it's incredibly unique, incredibly complex. And yet, with the finish line now in sight, there's a serious problem that won't go away. One that's already seen this gigantic scheme stopped in its tracks. Think Colorado, and you'll probably imagine something like this. Just outside Denver is where the Rocky Mountains begin and where a great deal of water can be found. There are lakes, reservoirs, the Colorado River and its tributaries all within reach. It's a good place to be if you like the quiet life, except that is for this particular site, which has become a hive of activity in recent years. Back in the 1950s, a large gravity dam was built here to serve the Denver metropolitan area. Due to its rising population, the city needed a new water source to keep up with increased demand and resources, and so the Gross Reservoir was born. But reservoirs don't just fill up on their own, of course. A massive wall of concrete, the Gross Dam, had to be built first. It would capture water coming in mainly from the Fraser River, which joins onto the mighty Colorado River via the Moffat Tunnel. Okay, but before we move on, and because I just can't ignore it anymore, why is it called the Gross Reservoir? <gasps> Gross! Well, no, it's not because it's disgusting, or because of its size, which is pretty substantial. Freaking idiot! It's actually named after Dwight D. Gross, who was the former chief engineer of Denver Water. That's the utility company that owns and operates both the reservoir and the dam. Sorry to ruin the fun, but at least you now know. When full, the reservoir is capable of holding 42,000 acre feet, around 52 million cubic meters of water. And for decades, that was absolutely fine. Until 2020, when Denver Water got permission to expand the reservoir by making the dam even bigger, by over 100 feet. That would see capacity increase almost threefold to 119,000 acre feet, or nearly 150 million cubic meters, enough to supply 72,000 homes with water every year. What that led to is a ginormous project to build a 131-foot dam raise on top of a 340-foot tall dam. Jeff Martin leads the team at Denver Water responsible for the entire program, from concept right through to completion. Building a 471-foot concrete dam in 2025 is a challenging endeavor on a number of fronts. That is big under any standards throughout the world. And it's extremely rare what we're tackling, really just to provide a secure water future to the Denver area. Why does it need securing? Well, because over the years, Denver and neighboring Boulder County have become increasingly vulnerable to water-related disasters. Well, a wildfire south of Boulder, Colorado this weekend forced thousands to flee. The drought picture across Colorado, the worst drought situation that we've had in several years. There is widespread flood activity across the area. Emergency officials are urging you to seek higher ground immediately. There's more than just snowy mountains in Colorado. It can get very hot, dry, and also pretty wet here too. 2002 saw an unusually serious drought, along with the Heyman fire, which destroyed well over 100 homes. So having more water available to deal with such problems, if and when they occur, starts to make sense. Population growth doesn't show any signs of stopping either. In 2020, Denver Water announced that daily users had risen to 1.5 million people, 100,000 higher than just four years before. There's a pretty big imbalance with where it stores its water as well. 
90% of it is held in reservoirs to the south of Denver, with the other 10% to the north where the Gross Dam is. But despite how it might sound, expanding this rather imposing piece of infrastructure is actually not a new idea. In fact, it was kind of the plan right from the beginning. You see, the dam was constructed with the intention of being raised at least once should that become necessary in the future, which it clearly has. So in a minute, we're going to come on to how teams here have actually been delivering on a scheme that's designed to keep a city flowing efficiently for years to come. But before we do that, I want to talk to you about something that's designed to do the same for the businesses who build projects like this. The way these businesses operate can be very complex, and trust me, the last thing they need is more stress when it comes to payments. Sales, transactions, customers, performance, inventory, they're often done manually or using tools that are disconnected. This isn't only hard to manage, it hurts profits, which is where Sky OS comes in. It's a purpose-built operating system that brings all those processes together into one connected platform, giving you both speed and visibility. Designed for the construction industry, it gives owners control over every dollar that moves through their business. In fact, it works a little bit like a dam, except instead of retaining water and dictating how it's used, Sky OS lets you retain profits and manage costs. Real-time insights and performance dashboards show you where profits are earned and where money is lost. Product and inventory tools keep every material, tax and discount organized, while fully managed accounts can be easily made for each client, meaning no more paper trails. And because it's automated with intelligence payment optimization, it's proven to increase profits by up to 20%. You can see how SkyOS is giving billions back and rebuilding the digital foundation of the construction industry at the link below. Now, let's get back over to Colorado and see how on earth you raise a dam. The idea is obviously to add more concrete to the existing dam, but not just on top. They're having to build up the south-facing or dry side as well to help maintain stability. To achieve this, 118 concrete steps are being constructed from the ground right up to the top of the new dam. Each one is 4 feet high and set back 2 feet from the step underneath. Then the crest or tip goes on, followed by a control building, electronics, railing and bridge across the spillway. Construction began in 2022 and by June 2025 workers had reached the height of the original dam more than 7,000 feet above sea level. As for the method used to create these steps, Denver Water has chosen a different approach to the original dam's builders. There's two ways to make a concrete dam. One is with what we call conventional concrete. That's how the original dam was built. And it's basically built in 50 foot blocks all the way up. And uh, just like Hoover was and some of the other iconic concrete dams uh, throughout the world were done. In the 1980s, a new uh, method came into existence through innovation. It's called roller compacted concrete. First, the concrete is brought in by dump truck, which, well, dumps the material on top of the surface. Next, it's spread by a bulldozer before being rolled and compressed by a smooth drum compactor. The concrete's made on sites, a mixture of rocks, cement, fly ash and water. While other dams have been raised before, this is the largest one in the world to be done using RCC. Because we had over 600,000 yards of conventional concrete, and we're going to overlay that with over 700,000 yards of new roller compacted concrete. The mix design itself, temperatures that it had to maintain during placement, and how it was placed against the old dam were all extremely critical details on making sure that this dam behaves as one dam going forward. This choice of material offers lower curing temperatures, meaning it doesn't take as long to set as regular concrete. Embodied carbon is reduced as well, and it's less likely to crack. So everything appears to be going to plan, except... A federal district court judge has dealt an expensive setback at least, and possibly an end to the project. In April 2025, all construction on the project was put on hold following a court injunction. A US district judge ruled in favor of environmental groups who've been campaigning against this expansion for years. They include the Waterkeeper Alliance, Sierra Club, and Save the Colorado. They believe the new, larger reservoir will have a negative effect on the wider Colorado River water system 
as well as nearby residents. This project would drain more water out of the Colorado River. It's in crisis mode. Um, and all the states in the southwest United States are trying to decide how to use less Colorado River water, and this one would use more. The second reason is that they would, it would be, and it has been, the biggest construction project in Boulder County history. There's about a thousand houses up and around the area. It's been an extraordinary nightmare for those people living through this 24-7 construction process. Adding credence to these claims, it emerged the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, which supplied the permits, didn't factor in the full environmental impact when it approved the project. According to the judge, viable alternatives to this expansion were not properly addressed, which led to a somewhat unlikely win for Gary and his team in court when you consider who they were up against. It certainly was a legal victory, and it certainly is a David versus Goliath phenomenon. We're a tiny organization, and they're one of the biggest water providers in the Southwest United States. Um, and they do have an extremely big and high-powered law firm. We're a lean, mean, river-saving machine. I think the outcome of the district court really worked on our behalf. But it was only a temporary pause. Just a month later, the judge did a U-turn after claims from Denver Water that leaving the dam unfinished could lead to serious consequences, like flooding. That meant construction could continue, but there was still one pretty big issue remaining. Although they got the green light to carry out the works, permission was not given to actually fill the expanded reservoir, at least not yet. The process of filling the reservoir is expected to take around five years, but we still don't know when or even if that can happen. New permits would need to be signed first, but because the Army Corps of Engineers made extensive and serious errors, it's unlikely to be straightforward. So there's a chance that all of this could be for nothing. Okay, but let's rewind a bit and dig a little deeper into what exactly it is that campaigners are unhappy about. If this dam's already been here for about 70 years, then what's wrong with just making it a bit bigger? Surely that's better than building an entirely new dam and reservoir somewhere else. This is one of the mitigation measures that Denver Water has put in place to limit what could otherwise be a much larger impact on the local environment. By storing extra water in the reservoir, they can also direct more of it into the adjacent creek, improving fish habitats. They're also introducing new wetlands and preserving other areas to offset some of the deforestation that has to happen on a project like this. Around 200,000 trees are being removed, which is sort of inevitable when so much land is being inundated and water quality has to be maintained. There's only one way to tackle a project like this, and that's with a culture of environmental stewardship and making sure that we're fully analyzing the impacts from the project. We've done a lot of different mitigation to make sure that in the end, that this is a net environmental benefit to the state of Colorado. That might be so, but Gary isn't convinced. He believes the impact of these dams is just too great, not just on the local area, but on the whole Colorado River Basin. Dams kill rivers. That's what dams do. They block a river. Uh, if it's a hydropower dam, they block a river and completely change the flow of the water in the river. The climate scientists claim drought and climate change have lowered the flow in the entire Colorado River around 20% from its original flow. And so the river's already been devastated. This will make it worse, and that's why we're opposing it. Then there's the cost of all this. When the project gained approval in 2021, the price was set at 531 million US dollars, and that remains the most widely reported figure. But when you factor in the unexpected legal costs and the new permits that now need to be done, there's a good chance that number's going to rise. As for where that money comes from, unlike a lot of American infrastructure projects, it won't be tax dollars. Denver Water is funded entirely by ratepayers, fees for connecting new customers, and the sale of renewable energy. Gross Dam has been home to its own hydro plant since 2007. Despite the problems the company's faced, their reservoir's latest upgrade isn't too far from the end. 2026 is when they plan to top out on the dam and finish the spillway and supporting buildings. 
A year later, it'll be time to start filling the reservoir, assuming they've been cleared to do so. Like so many other construction projects that have had some major issues, the gross reservoir expansion is becoming no more for what's gone wrong than what's gone right. But while the setbacks and environmental concerns shouldn't be overlooked, what they're trying to achieve here deserves recognition too. Whether or not this is a good thing for Denver, Boulder County, or the whole of Colorado is clearly a contested topic. But what can't be denied is that this is a feat of construction that truly raises the bar. This video was sponsored by Sky Systems. Don't forget to go and check out how SkyOS can help your business at the link below. And as always, guys, if you thought this video was damn good and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, make damn sure you subscribe. Mm -hmm.